Hello, I'm Lee. In this video, we are going to look at how to use exceptions and how to define your own exceptions. So let's open this testing file. And for exceptions, we have a main method here, try to test some exceptions. And for exceptions, we have runtime exception and checked exception. So runtime exception is uh, unchecked exception. What does that one mean? Let's take a look. So with this test runtime exception, first we have an integer list and we add a bunch of integers and we add three integers and then we are trying to access the fourth integer. You know that's not right because we only have three elements there. So this one will throw a exception there a re index out of it's an index out of bounds exception so uh, you see when i try to do the get trying to do the get this get method will throw an exception so for example if you come how do you know let's see if you come to the java api and let's go there and take a look at the the list interface because we are using the get method in the list interface the get method let's take a look if you look into the the get method it says I might throw an index out of bounds exception. So that's in the specification of this get method. So, and runtime exception, the, the also unchecked exception means, you see for this get method, it, it could throw an exception. In our case, it will throw an exception, but we are not required to do anything. So that's for all the runtime exception, even if they could throw some exception, but in your code, you don't have to um, catch that exception and handle it in any way. You're not required to do that. So that's why all the runtime exceptions are unchecked exception. And you might be wondering why. Uh, for most of the runtime exception, it's about your program logic. So something's wrong with your program logic that like in our case, we have three elements and we are trying to access the fourth one. Of course, we're in trouble. So that's your program logic. So it's kind of like a, the runtime exception will let you go because you're supposed to fix all those runtime exception when, 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 you, when you design your program. All right, so let's take a look at another one. And I have a map, map a string to a set of integer. It's just the arbitrary example. So I have a key called hello, and I have a set. So I'm trying to get that set from the map. So uh, trying to get the set that map to hello. And here I, I was careful. I'm trying to do some testing, say, if the set is no, that means if the first time I add to this set, then I'm going to create a new set and uh, add this set to the map before I add anything to that set. Without this testing, assume you don't have this testing, you say, hey, I get the set of integer for hello and add one integer to that set. You're going to get a no pointer exception because this set is a no is a no object. It never exists. So you see, this is another program logic uh, error. If if you don't have this testing, that's your programming logic. Uh, something's wrong with your programming logic. That's why for runtime exception, uh, the compiler doesn't reinforce it. So like get will throw an exception, but you don't have to do anything. So that's runtime exception. Most likely they're closely related to your program logic. And now let's take a look at the checked exception. That's the opposite of runtime exception. The checked exception means if a method could throw an exception, you are required to handle it somehow. So let's take a look. I have a printer writer object. A printer writer object help you to write something, to write some text, write something to 
um, to some stream. Okay, now let's see. I create a printer writer, and uh, this printer writer is just wrapping around a file writer. So you see, when I say a new file writer here, I'm trying to open the data.txt. If it doesn't exist, it might create a new one for it. So you first create a file writer object, then wrap it around and create a printer writer because the reason we do that is printer writer is easier to use like you can do out dot print line hello out dot print print line by but file writer doesn't know how to write a line of things there so what we did is we first create a file writer then wrap it around with a more friendly printer writer then ask this printer writer to write out lines for us all right okay but this file writer, this file writer one, when you create a file writer, it could uh, throw a IO uh, IO exception. So and IO any IO exceptions, they are checked exception. That means it's possible for this constructor to throw an IO exception. Then since it's a checked exception, you're required to honor it in some way. So in our case, we do a try, try this code, try this code. And the major thing is about this guy. This guy throw an IO exception. So we just try to do it and catch an IO exception. You see the syntax here, it looks like a, a method. This look like a parameter actually, and a curly brace. That means inside of those curly braces, imagine it's like a method definition. I'm after I catch this exception, I'm going to do something about it. So I'm going to get the message and print it out. So that's what I'm trying to do. And it could be I want to print the stack trace, and uh, uh, if that exception happened, I decide to just uh, exit out. Uh, okay, so that's a catch thing. And uh, I can catch different exception, and you see catch IO exception. IO exception is a subclass of exception. Runtime exception is another subclass of exception. Um, so you see this is the most specific exception I catch, and this is a very general exception. I'm ca I'm trying to catch. That means whatever exception. So. Um, after you catch our exception, if you throw any other exception, I'm going to catch all here. So because every exception is an exception class. Okay, so let's see what I, what other exception could happen. You see here, I have print out the first argument. It could be I don't have a first argument. Then it gave me a um, array out of boundary exception or some other exception here. So I, I'm going to catch it right here. Okay, so that's a catch class. And now we have a finally class. The finally class is, it doesn't matter um, if you catch an exception or not, and this line will always be executed. So the finally class means, uh, it doesn't matter if the exception happens, let's see, if the exception happens here, the exception happens, then it won't print line or hello or bye. When the exception ha happens, it will come right here to the catch class, to the catch class. And if you don't have a finally class, it will just get out of this catch class and uh, do this, the line after the try catch finally statement. But if you have the finally class, it will come here and execute the finally class. Okay, now let's imagine if you don't have any exception, this is successful, then it just the print hello and bye and trying to do this. Then the flow will skip the catch class because you didn't catch anything and still come to the finally class and come to this one. Okay, so now we examine those two scenarios. When the exception happens, you come here, then here, then here. And when the exception doesn't happen, you come here all the way, then you come here finally. So finally means you always come down here and do this. So that's the flow about try, catch, uh, and finally. So how about in the other scenario, if this one fails, 
If this one fails, those ones still they happen, and this one fail, then you come to this catch clause because it's not I/O exception. It's some other exception. Then you still come to finally clause and do this. So that's the flow control about the try catch, um, and the finally statement. Um,、mm, pretty much you put the questionable code like. This one could throw an exception. This one could throw an exception into the try class. Then you catch、um, exception from most specific exception to more general exception, and the finally class、uh, will do some clean up work, like、uh, close the、uh, output file handle. That sort of thing. So that's called.、Uh, that's how you do check the exception. Like for this one, if you don't put it in the try catch class, it won't compile because it will throw a catch, a checked exception. That means the compiler will reinforce that you do something about this exception. It could happen, so you can put it in the try catch class. And another way to do test. Uh, to do checked exception is you see here I didn't do anything here didn't do any, the try catch class instead I specified I say okay it's possible that my method that means somewhere here is going to throw an I O exception so I declare it right there at the method header so that my caller knows about it and my caller will handle it in some way so this is a situation you don't want to、uh, try and catch the exception you want to、um, leave it to your caller you just、uh, specified in your method definition you say you keep on throwing you just say I throw I O exception then it's up to my caller to do the right thing so let's take a look at how the caller of test specify exception did so. In the main method, you see,、um, I do test the runtime exception because runtime exception doesn't require me to catch it, and I do test the checked exception. And remember, we we do the try catch class in that method. But for specify exception, that one says I'm going to throw an exception. I I might throw an exception. I didn't catch it, so it's up to you to do this work. So in the caller, I have to do that. So if you don't do that, if you just say test specify exception, that means you have to throw our exception here. So if you don't want to catch it, you have to make the method specify the exception. Okay, so that's about check the exception.、Uh, you can try and catch it right there. You can. And specified in your method header, say I'm going to, I might throw an I/O exception, and going on with your business. And another way is to do both. I will try, catch, and I will throw it. So that means I will handle the exception, but meanwhile. Uh, I will handle it somehow here. I want my caller to handle it as well. Then you do a throw here. You throw the you throw the new I/O exception. You keep on, so you catch it. Then you keep on throwing it. So for your caller to handle it again. So how do you do that? Because here you say I'm going to throw the I/O exception, but here you already catch it. But after you catch it, you throw it again. It's like a ball. You catch the ball. You throw the ball, and. This one handle it somehow. Then they throw. You have to throw an L exception object. So new L exception and give more message and do this. So this second way specify exce exception did the try catch and so continue to throw it and declared here. Then let's take a look at the main method. So it says、um, try test this one captured it. And do more handling there. All right, so that's about、um, runtime exception, the unchecked exception, and the checked exception. So runtime exception, pretty much you don't, you're not required to do anything about the exception. But checked exception, all the I/O exceptions are checked exceptions.、Uh, you have to honor it somehow. You can try catch it, you can throw it, and you can try catch it and throw it. Thank you.